friend is truly the voice of our generation. Help me! So you know what we get? Help me! Wake the fuck up! Okay. <laughs> oh, I thought it, I thought there was gonna be more. Um, we we're got, recording this, and I'm keeping it in. Right. We got a clip from Pineapple Express. Two Which one? Things. Right. Are you actually leaving this in? Yes. Cold open. Yeah. Okay. So cold open, and then we're gonna do the Pope was out. Okay. So cold open to resolutions for the podcast this year. Uh, we're gonna change things up, and we're gonna kind of figure I things out. You were talking to me. I am about talking the to you. Express. Well, I am talking to you about Pineapple Express. So <laughs> the things we I I wanted to get something off my chest before I forgot. Right. Anyway. We're back. Well, Anyways, we'll <laughs> Pineapple Express, we have to clip two things. One, the, I heard that, wish I, I didn't, didn't hear, hear that, that, but I, but heard, I heard that. that. We and always say that. Yeah, we always say that. And also, we have to clip the don't. Right. Don't. <laughs> just, just stop. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? Part. What? And the bees knees. Yeah. This is the bees knees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how we should start out our pod now. <laughs> Just <laughs> instead of the Danny <laughs> McBride, we're going <laughs> to. <laughs> <laughs> we're back. We're back. <laughs> oh my God. I give we're him back. A year. <laughs> oh, yeah. I give him a year. <laughs> All right, and this one, this one. Listen up, listen up. Listen up. Who took my fucking cell phone, man? <laughs> All right, we're back. <laughs> Got the soundboard back. Excuse me. No, we're back. <laughs> <Just> no. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, wouldn't it be funny if they couldn't hear the soundboard? <laughs> right. <laughs> We should do an episode like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Or an or what Blake Anderson did an episode of just the soundboard. Yeah. Remember or, that? Yes. <laughs> or actually, actually, here is what would be funny. Yeah, for like twenty five minutes like that. No, 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 no. Here, here. Here is the idea. We'll do a podcast where we're both wearing noise canceling headphones and we're trying to carry right. on a conversation. Right. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. <laughs> Straight fuckery. <laughs> <laughs> well, how has it been going? What's up, everybody? Um, right. Yeah. I feel like the uh, lighting looks really good in here today. Oh, I have something in my eye. Thank yourself. Jennifer you did it. Tilly, I've got something in my eye. That's Jennifer Coolidge. Oh, Jennifer Coolidge. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, obviously I'm still thinking about Bound from last week. <laughs> okay, anyways. You got the Jennifer's mixed up. That's okay. And I just said Jennifer's body. So <laughs> obviously I'm thinking about a lot of Jennifer's. <laughs> Jennifer Coolidge at the uh, Emmys. Mm. I'd like to thank the evil gays. Right. You. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anyway. Hey, what's up? What's happening? Big Snoop and this bitch get it cracking. Right. A little bit, of, you know. <laughs> we gotta cut that out. I... <sighs> There's no cut out. Gotta go. I have a prior engagement. Right. <laughs> 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 Anyway, where should we begin? Well, mm, Actually, you know what? I want to. It's been negative fifteen. <laughs> How's the weather? Yeah, no, the weather is <laughs> not no bueno for one. Uh, but I would like to start off with a quick cue. What? I got a question for you. For me. For you. For me. Do you have any New Year's resolutions or goals? Um, I'm going to answer that just like um, our guy from the Buckley's vlogs. No. <laughs> Not even the fart more one? <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess my real one is to just like watch more movies. 
Well, and listen to more music. That's my goal is to listen to more music because I feel like I slacked this new this past year and I missed out on a lot of good music. And you have to listen to better music. That's the thing. I think I'm so stuck in <laughs> listening to the same things all the time that my goal for this year is to branch out a little more and listen to full albums from new artists. No more Taylor Swift. No more Dua Lipa. No more Nicki Minaj. I don't listen Minaj. to fucking Dua Lipa. <laughs> I call her Dula Peep half the time. Right. <laughs> I listen to her conveniently when she comes on at work, and I know the words to the songs, but she's not in a playlist. Oh, wait, no, that's Sabrina Carpenter I was thinking of. That's who she's you like She's cute. Now. She went on to tour with Taylor. Right. Me sitting here this dressed is my like this, way. I am a Taylor Swift fan. <laughs> <laughs> this um soundboard clip is the only one I use right. in there. It's the only and, one we say in real life. No. Right. <laughs> Wait, do we say, well, we say the other thing. Well, no, we, need we are to start terrible. bringing our bits You guys, to the if we, yeah, we can't, I don't know, man. Our lives are bits. <laughs> yeah, our we're just constantly workshopping a, a new bit. <laughs> I was thinking about that at work today. I was like, I can't workshop bits here. <laughs> right. I, I, you know what? I can with the old <laughs> people, like, because. The like the seniors that come in, I can like do funny things with them and they laugh and like I feel like I'm workshopping a bit with the old people. Right. But I don't have conversations with people our age because I feel like they would judge me. Yeah. My humor is not for everyone. Uh, <laughs> <it's> <laughs> well <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say speaking of not for everyone, should we start off by talking about the film we watched last night? Oh right. right. Yeah. So I Help me Literally <laughs> me watching this. Help me <laughs> Wake the fuck you turn it off. Uh, yeah, I know. I just wanted that help me part. Oh, okay, anyways. Uh so <laughs> I am gearing up for a cult horror movie review week on my horror channel. If you guys have been there on my channel, um, last year I took a year off from doing themed reactions and I'm bringing it back just for the main two that I have the most fun with. Um, we're going to do cult horror movie week in mm. February and body horror week in March because I think that body horror is our favorite genre. <laughs> is there any like cool things coming out then or what? Uh, I'm not sure to be fair right now off the top, but we did watch a film that I guess could be considered body horror. Uh, Alex picked out a film thinking that it would be more of like, well, I didn't think it was cult vibes. But it was called We Are the Flesh from well, 2016. Yeah. It was, it, in my humble opinion, IMO. Even after watching it, I still got the vibe of the cult idea. And I only said that because I, I read some reviews where they called it a cult. But a lot of people were actually questioning, like, literally their own views. They're, they were questioning what the director was even trying to say. The director in interviews was like kind of not even he didn't really even have like an idea with of like the way he was trying to go with the movie i think so many penises and i think that's why i think that's why it, it ended up being like you were like i don't see the cult vibes okay, and well, then i was like i kind of do i don't uh, know like the sex cult vibes i guess yeah but you lost me the points got lost when he was birthed from like a right a slime wall Right, but maybe that's like more of like a representation of something. I don't know. I don't know. And then, like, spoiler alert: it just ends with some guy walking outside, and it's like not like you feel like it's an apocalyptic film, and like this could have happened after like some sort of event. This guy's like m turning his apartment into like caves with cardboard and packing tape, and only eating eggs and he said he has to like trade something for the eggs uh, and i feel like is he trading sex for eggs is that what that was i don't i don't i am it just didn't feel it felt like it was in a different time and then it just ends with uh, there was a three-person cast for 
95% of the film, it ends with like a hundred people in this cave looking apartment and then a guy just getting up and walking out. Um, and well, and it's normal like New York, but it was Mexico. Um, I also read that like a lot of people were um, upset at the, well, not upset, but like they didn't, it, I apparently like the ending is very like, controversial with what people were like trying to get out of the movie. But um, I read that like the, I see like this is like where it goes weird because like sometimes the director was like saying that this was supposed to be like showing that like Mexico is like a, it feels like post-apocalyptic and it's supposed to be like a metaphor for how like Mexico feels in real life. Kind of like how a Serbian film is supposed to feel. Right. Yikes. But he was like, but then he was also saying that like he didn't really know which way he was like trying to go with it and he just kind of like went with the flow as he was making the movie actually he said that at the end he didn't even have any ending written for the movie at all and he just said uh it will magically appear when we're filming and he got to the end and that's what they did with it so he much. literally had no idea of like what he was going to do yeah, with it so much unsimulated sex which is fine. Yes, it's fine. But it, me- it it really just was there to shock because it was incestual. Like it was shocking. I mean, like, that's what we're here for. We're here to be shocked. Here to be weird, baby. He got... He, apparently, the director's influences are Gaspar in a way. Obviously, you could tell. And that's why I literally said I'm surprised Gaspar Noe did not watch this 46 times right. like he did with Angst um, or however many times he watched it. But it felt so like yeah. for what it is, it's soft core porn. It's hardcore porn. It's porn. But well, it's porn with a story. <laughs> uh, <laughs> porn I mean, with it's a not story really, you can though, because it's not really like. No, because you're not, it's not like gratifying at all. It's like uncomfortable. Yeah, you're very, it's it's like, it's like the kind of porn that you see. it's not really even porn. Like, I don't know. Babes. Babes, babes. There was a close up. Of? Of a, she was, I don't, we're going to get demonetized anyway. She was given a blowjob. There was a full close. Was, it was Wait. like at an angle where you could. Wait, do you want to say that again? She was given a blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like at a POV <laughs> angle. Like it was, it's, it, what, what do you call it? I'm calling a spade a spade here. Okay, but like it wasn't like full like. No, and that's the thing. That's the thing. The, it, it's with it's you got to take this with at your you're watching an incestual thing happen because it's brother and sister. I am hor- it's horrific. And then you've got this creepy old guy just like hanging brain off to the side, you know? J. Owen. J. Owen. And um the guy Sicked the out. guy that directed it apparently said that he attempted to get to a real, a real brother and sister brother and sister and um but he decided against it because he said that would have been too many ba- he said like the boundary was like at but he thought about it because he was like yeah this guy's yeah. got a sister about his yeah. age yeah and he said well he said that it would have been like too controversial for his first film he said like maybe like in another film he would do something like that and apparently Marilyn Manson in the article that I was reading Marilyn Manson made something or was attempting to make something where they had like two brothers and sisters in real life like having sex that sounds like something that he would do that phantasmagoria or something it was called uh as soon as you said that i'm just thinking back to the his autobiography and everything i read in that R- and that checks out R- um yeah i'm uh- horrified and uh, yeah, that's apparently they were like, well, do you know that? Was they- it the Soska sisters? Because and they it- seem to be into some fucking fucky shit. Well, that's why we follow them. Even though I they're know, they are great, aren't they? Except for <laughs> their hot take of the idol being the best. All show of their the takes year. are fucking All their, too The hot. Matrix 4 oh, being a them. great movie. You guys got to You guys got to get a reality check here. They're like cool. Like I would invite them on the pod, but they're like, 
I would like debate them about their movie choices. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> also, where's this BDSM like dominatrix film you've been teasing for like two years? Right. Hello. Uh, Pay up. Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh um, but needless to say, this that movie was. Uh, it was like I literally gave it a two and a half, even though like. I didn't I even know. I gave it a three to... and a half because of how shocking it was. Um, I liked the shocking elements, and I, I can like kind of get the idea of like what the director was going for, even though it was like stupid, artsy, fartsy, BS, like pretentious shit. But I um gave it a two Mexican and a half. Mexican art house cinema, it is right. I gave, I gave it a two and a half because like I just didn't know. Like I was. I was actually thinking of like not giving any rating, but I just put it in the middle because I didn't know like where to go with that. I didn't know what to give it. I didn't know how I felt at the end. Okay. I just know I, I felt something weird. Yeah. Yeah. Not horny. <laughs> not I. <laughs> was that Taryn Manning? That was Taryn that? Manning. Not I. <laughs> <laughs> how? I'm gonna drive my car. You know, right. Taryn Manning's hit single. When is that coming out? You guys Taryn? gotta get on that vibe. <laughs> Go check her Instagram for more. Anyways, uh, niche joke. Um, uh, where was I? Oh, that film. So we are the flesh. I would probably not recommend it to general audiences because you guys probably would not like it. But if you want to be shocked, if you want to feel like you need a shower after a film. If you want to see some actual, like, creative cinema, <laughs> but feel gross at the end, I mean, it's an original idea. Um, well, the director, going back to that, said that he wants general audiences to watch it. He actually said... This movie would have been cool. Like, I would have liked to watch this as a teenager. And he said, it would be cool if 15-year-olds saw this movie because that's the type of movie that he was seeking out when he was 15. And he said it would gross them out, and that's what he was going for. (laughs) I don't know. I don't know if it's getting lost in translation with the Mexican. I don't necessarily think I would recommend the... <laughs> the sexy action and the J and O scenes, and there's so much in that film I would not show. There's anyone. too many JOs. I don't know about that. Like there's I was, t- I was fine with the other parts, but like the JOs, like get there's out of here, though. JOs. Oh my god. You know what? There's. I saw someone complaining about the. <laughs> vagina shot that's what i was gonna say there's a close-up uh, of like a whole like lady vagina bits. and bowl <laughs> a whole butthole <laughs> <laughs> you're wild anyways and then it just snaps to a whole peen yeah and it's right in your face but, see i saw someone complaining about the v and not the p and I was com- I was like, wait, I don't want to be assaulted with this pee. I don't care about the V's because at least like girls. No, like- babes, babes. You're not. It's the B. You're being assaulted by the balls because the he. Re- I'm so. Okay, the but balls. The- because- <laughs> okay, but the- no. Okay, but- <laughs> listen, listen, because this listen. Go viral, like- <laughs> listen, he's gonna. He sat there and he filmed this guy's ball sack just fucking. <laughs> Don't even describe it. I can't it. describe it. It's just do, it's doing its thing. If you know, you know. And <laughs> and uh, the um, yeah, but like okay, my thing is like we need like less men. <laughs> You know, as a man, I appreciate a, your input. <laughs> as a man, a how female, are you going to show your appreci- cock and balls on the screen like that? Help me! <laughs> That's the moment, you know. I, I'm gonna head out. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this has gone so far. Up. Let's. Uh, any final as thoughts on man, that one? <laughs> how are you gonna do that?
I gotta go. <laughs> I showed Alex a video I saw today of this cat, and it was trying to be like the guy was trying to love the cat, and he kissed the cat on the head. And the cat went. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of response I have right now, thinking about yeah. this film. <laughs> Yeah, it gets, like, grosser as you're, like, explaining it. I don't know. Yeah, there's just too many layers. I mean, if you guys want to watch it, proceed with caution. I just, I wasn't going to cover it on my channel, so I figured well, maybe we could have a little bit more of an in-depth. Uh, I'm definitely putting it in, like, a weird film list, but I'm not going to do a whole video on it. So Why? You I don't, don't want to get demonetized. No, it's just not something that I really want to spend a week trying to prepare a video on. Right. <laughs> I'm kind of over it already. I, this uh, is our, we're, we've just idea dumped and now we can move on. <laughs> I mean, I guess. What's next? Oh, should we quickly talk about Dragula? Oh, right. We've, yeah. What's up with Orgotic and Neo? <sighs> Listen, I, I, spoiler uh, alerts. I'm going to give you like five seconds to head out if you don't want to hear who won this, uh, competition here neo huru x neo hulu x sorry allegedly um, allegedly uh one and i i had a feeling deep down that neo would win uh but i really wanted throb zombie to win i thought just they put up such a good fight they did so well their makeup looks just the performances they went all out the shower they they had their for their final look they were a freaking shower drain and saltburn fans you wouldn't have liked this one right <laughs> wait what was there a movie that we were like oh saltburn yeah it was the film last night we oh, are right. the flesh because she was stood over some guy and the kid and bled in his face and it's like you guys were shocked by saltburn oh right right i forgot the blood the blood. The blood in the blood. The blood right. in the blood. <laughs> um, oh, and Dracula. Yeah, I just wish like they were like a little grosser. Like with their last ones. I agree. Because um, I feel like some of the others, uh, other seasons, some of the queens and the kings and whatever, they like went a lot harder at that. Yeah, and I don't, if Jarvis would have made it to the top four, I don't see them going far because I don't think they could have really leaned, I don't see them leaning into the filth aspect right. as much. True, true. Or even like Fantasia. Yeah, if he, I mean, Fantasia would probably do something really generic. I don't know. Um, right. I was very happy with Blackberry. I thought Blackberry did a great job. Uh, I just you hated Orgotic. I hated Orgotic. I really did. Not like as a person, just as like I couldn't watch him try to throw up. Right. <laughs> oh, we were eating dinner, and I had to look away. <laughs> I have a metaphobia, guys. That really was hard to watch. Need more throw up. No. No, we're good. You know? Uh, speaking of throw up. No, I'm just kidding. Right. <laughs> uh, Dry Grace is also back. Right. Uh, so, I mean, we'll probably talk about that yeah. more as the season progresses, but we are currently watching that. Um, we finished The Curse. We finished The Curse. It was fucking weird. <laughs> no spoilers. No spoilers, and I don't think we're going to talk too much about it because mm. Alex is currently in the process of starting a new, another. Another one. Pod. Yeah, uh, we're still doing this one. Which will kind of like be in our little network of podcasts, um, but it is with uh, our friend Logan. Yeah. It's called The Former Critics. And uh, there's going to be more talk of the curse on that so if you guys want to hear more about that stay tuned just know that i loved it i was thoroughly cringed out by it oh right um thinking of emma stone i should point out you guys see ryan gosling behind us we had to and we were to every week he's been staring at us from across the room we mention it now there he's is. staring at you so <laughs> that's a curse moment <laughs> literally <laughs> just slow zoom on his face <laughs> um also we just finished the gypsy rose documentary and my 
Mm-hmm. Couple of thoughts. Actually, do you want to like say anything about it before I go? I just I want to tear. G- Gypsy. Yeah. Well, no, I mean I don't know. I just uh, so the doc was like a little weird. I guess like set up weird. My problem with it is the lifetime reenactments and the lifetime yeah. music that was put over it. I don't think it was taken as seriously as it could have been taken. It was like a selling sunset style exactly. music. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I just genuinely, there was a TikTok of someone that said, uh, Gypsy Rose is going to, you guys aren't going to like her as much as you thought you were going to because she's not going to perform the way that you thought she was going to perform for you like a freaking circus animal. And at this point, she isn't. And people are not happy with her anymore because they're seeing her true colors and they're seeing, you know, we can't judge her. We can't, we can't, you know, wrong her for what's happened to her because a lot of it was out of her control. But we also don't know her. We all, we were not, we were not privy to her for her eight years incarcerated. So we don't know the kind of thoughts and opinions and I don't know what kind of person she is yet because we're still getting to know her. So people are easily going to be offended by the things she might have to say because she's not caught up to where we are, you know? Well, my thing is, is like, All of those people that are, like, complaining about that anyway are just, it's nonsense. And also, um, like, she literally killed her mom. And, um, like, I guess, like, you you know, like, that's, like, her true colors. I think, like, you know, even if she literally came out and, like, screamed, like, the N-word on stream, it's still not as bad as literally taking your mom's life. But uh, when I, with that said, I understand why she did that. But I'm just saying, like, how I, the people that are, like, canceling her, it makes no sense. It makes well, no sense. Like, you would have canceled her for the thing that she did. Exactly. And the people that are, like, <clears throat> without even, like, th- like, they're just commenting, like, yes, mother. Yeah. Like, she right. is probably not privy to the drag community. Probably doesn't understand what the connotation of that means. Which. Maybe she does. I mean, she could. But. What if, in the same token, what if she doesn't? Like she didn't approve even know how to use like Instagram drag. or something yeah. when we were watching the doc. What if she doesn't approve of the drag culture, and what then? Then all of that community is going to be offended now because you've all just tried to embrace her with, you know, everything, and she's like, no, I, you know, I'm actually against that. We don't know. We don't. We don't know what to expect. So people are just blindly right. happy that she's being let out of jail or out of prison. But we don't know what to like, expect. We shouldn't be like glamorizing her, regardless of like the situation. Also, like you know what? Or your views. Let her process things on her own. Stop putting a well, camera in her face. Well, I mean, to be fair, she's like. I mean, she. I, I. Well, I don't know who is who is running it, but she's like a part of it, right? Yeah, I know, but it's like, I feel like she's never gonna if if she's just. If people are going to continue to ask her about what happened and bring things up, she's never going to get past it. I think like the, uh, I I don't mind like her doing like interviews or like the podcasts or like the documentary, but she's like not actually an influencer, but everyone's calling her one. Like as if that, like she like just is one, but she's not. And she's not even trying to sell anything besides like her show or whatever. And then you guys want her to perform. People want her to perform because now Everyone's she's on like, Instagram. Go on just Trish. Like, that's weird. Why? Why? Yeah, exactly. Uh, Why? Yeah, I don't I don't know. I'm going to get too heated about this. Um, the- let's, we're going to have to change the video over. Let's pause real quick and come back with some more hot takes. Help me! Okay, we're back, I guess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I am just quickly pulling up Letterboxd to see if there's a... A uh, couple of things we'd like to talk about. Actually. Right. Right. I give him a year. I give him a year. Um, I just quickly want to give a shout out. <laughs> That's what I wanted to do. Anyways. Uh... <laughs> Why do you have two of them? No, it's just softer. Oh, okay. It's like I it it's 
the keys are like based on velocity like how hard you hit it right anyways um i want to give a shout out to a film that i didn't expect to like as much as i did and uh it's onyx the fortuitous and the talisman of souls Right. <laughs> I really enjoyed that film and I thought it was really fun. You're um, joking. No, I really did enjoy it. And another film that in hindsight I enjoyed a lot more than I thought I was going to, uh Destroy All Neighbors. Right. Excuse me? I really liked the ending <laughs> of it. It really gave me a uh, psycho goreman vibes with the effects. Uh I thought it was full of a lot of heart and very fun and I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I mean, I like the Destroy All Neighbors one a little more just because it was like um, more gory, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, we also finally watched All Quiet on the Western Front. Mm. Good film. Right. Wait, didn't we mention that last time? I don't know. If we didn't, it just deserve it, it deserves a double mention. <laughs> uh, Alex is trying to get me to watch Schindler's List. Every day he tries to get me to watch Schindler's List. Well, no, it's only because you you were like, no, why would I ever watch that? And I was like, well, because it's literally like one of the most important movies of all time. So we're going to watch <laughs> it eventually uh, and I'll report back. But I just don't want to cry for three hours. And I feel like I will. You always do. I cried for the three hours of the eras tour. It's, <laughs> yeah. <sighs> I don't want to talk about it. It's um, going to be like come and see like where you're just like left there and it's just going to be like a sad fucking <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> just left with despair feelings. Yeah. It's just cool. bleak. Ben Kingsley and uh, our pal Ralph and yes, right. Ray Fiennes is in it. Yeah. Um, I do want to shout out the film. If you guys want like a really, really good film. Uh, Society of the Snow on Netflix mm. about the uh, Uruguayan soccer team that uh, their plane crashed. Uh, it was... It was a rugby team. Sorry, rugby team. But yeah. At least I'm pretty sure right in the movie <laughs> it was rugby. Uh, I'm think thinking rugby. of Yellow Jackets. I've got Yellow uh, Jackets on the brain. Well, it's a similar story, right? It's a similar right? story. Uh, but it was so shocking. Uh, so many parts... Uh, the, he thinks that I'm going to have the same kind of response to Schindler's List because I was audibly like having a visceral response to right. uh, Society of the Snow. Like it was shocking. The plane crash scene, shocking. Right. Yeah. Uh, but True, it was pretty good. It was very good. Um, another film we I gave five stars to Rosemary's Baby. Right. So good. <laughs> Um, was it the first time you watched it? No, I watched it when I was living with the film bros. But I don't think that I... Excuse me? Yeah, I know. <laughs> what, what did you, you just fucking say? say? <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think I gave it the attention that I <laughs> should have. And also, reading the book made me have so much more of an appreciation of the movie. Right. Because it was so true to the book. I was literally like, I felt like I was turning the pages of the book in my head when we were watching the movie. And like, you read it too. What did you think? Um, I think that you guys should all go check out my video that's going to be coming out. No, I'm oh, just kidding. Oh, shit. Um, I, um, I, well, I liked it. I did think it stayed true to the book for the most part. I just think it was like a little too long. But I guess that's the problem. Well, that's the point, I guess. Can I tell you something? Yes. Okay, on color, <laughs> on colors of the dark, Elric, oh when they were talking about the scary of sixty first, Jesus, Dasha, Dasha. <laughs> should we invite Dasha on? No. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean no? Uh, he said that the scary of sixty first font and like the opening w was giving him Rosemary's Baby vibes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Scary of si have first of all have you guys seen have you scary guys of seen 61st? the scary of sixty first? It is about a couple of like conspiracy theorists mm -mm. in an apartment that they think uh Jeffrey I almost said Dahmer 
close enough. Jeffrey <laughs> Epstein uh, was using the apartment for like young girls or whatever. But meanwhile, the third girl in the apartment is on her own being possessed by the spirit of one of the young girls that was trapped in the apartment. Yeah, like think of like haunting of Sharon Tate or something like that. But it's worse. That vibe. Yeah. It was so. <clears throat> why but um yeah it was like really bad but um dasha Dasha. uh, you have to invite her on no she gives nothing dasha did scary of 61st she directed and she she was in it right yeah and she was uh in succession she was in succession everyone loves succession they won all the awards she was in that and then she has like this really cringe podcast Allegedly dated yeah, Adam Friedland she- from Hometown. Don't say that. Don't say <clears throat> um, Allegedly. <laughs> I don't know, but allegedly there was like some CIA or something involved. I don't know. Big yikes. That's um, the that's a red bar rumor. <laughs> it's a red bar rumor. <laughs> Uh, we watched a couple of short films, including the question and answer Safdie Brothers, Adam right. Sandler, on Um Right. Little video. It was funny. It was uh, Jason Bateman is involved. If you guys like Uncut Gems, go on YouTube. Just type in question and answer Safdie Brothers. Yeah. You'll enjoy it. True. Um, but the last movie that I just kind of want to wrap up with is Mandy. Oh, it's low. Right. There it is. So I hated Mandy the first time I saw it. And admittedly, Same. I turned it off like maybe a half an hour into it because it was so goddamn slow. And <laughs> it was at a time where I wasn't really giving it the attention it deserved. But re- rewatching it because I'm covering it for <laughs> Cult Horror Movie Week. Oh, my God. That film was so good. It was so good. I gave it four stars. No complaints. I didn't give it four stars, but I did give it a higher rating. You're welcome. But um, that was because... Okay, wait. Can we can we go on a tangent about Panos Cosmatos or whatever his name? Yeah, because we did watch his, uh, his Cabinet movies. of Curiosity. We've, we've seen... Yeah, we were caught up. I think up. he has like a short film or something that we didn't watch. But um, his directing style, like it's... I was telling her, I was like, I like his directing style. I like the colors, the composition. He usually shoots it in like a cool, like, um, aspect ratio. I kind of like that vibe. And I like the idea. He usually comes up with like cool ideas. But it's just like really boring and expository and slow. You guys want to know a fun fact? Go on Wikipedia. Look up Mandy. The plot breakdown, four paragraphs. The movie, over two hours. <laughs> Why? If Mandy is, like, think about this. Mandy is his most, like, action-packed, upbeat movie, and that was still slow. So just take that. Like, that's how, like, his filmography is. It's like I want him to trim the fat in so many other places, and I want him to expand in yeah, so many I other places. I feel like places. it's always style over substance, which I like the style, but like then you get movies like We Are the Flesh, and that's how you end up with that. The guy literally... <clears throat> okay, so Alex thinks I have like resting bitch face, and... Uh, <laughs> You're admitting that to the world. <laughs> Well, I, not always. It's just sometimes you like you're giving off like a vibe like you're in a bad mood, and then I say, "What's wrong? What's up?" But I'm not. So I started giving him <laughs> this like really creepy smile to like prove that I'm not in a bad mood. Don't show them. Don't. I'm show not gonna show. <laughs> the guy in We Are the Flesh was doing that phase. <laughs> he was doing right. the phase. He was watching the kids fuck, and he was like, "Right, I, I can't. I gotta go." <laughs> <laughs> You're nuts. <laughs> I don't. I may have a little bit of resting bitch face. Don't give me that look. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just that, like, you just, like, sometimes you give off that you're in a bad mood. I'm pissed. <laughs> Remember when Polly D said that? He's like, pissed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Should we wrap it up? Yeah. 
Well, uh, oh, cat hair. Yeah, maybe we'll have another lot of films to talk about next week. But I mean, I think we did pretty good. It's only yeah. the seventeenth, uh, and we've watched Decent about chunk. seventeen films. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We try. We watched fifty six films last month. Yeah. Uh, so if either we, way, like we're still killing it. If we can get to at least thirty, I think we're good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, you can follow us wherever you yeah. get your podcasts. <laughs> uh, you can follow us on Instagram, Nefarious Things Pod, TikTok, uh, everything. We Nefarious have. Things. Yeah, we are everywhere. Everything, Shop. everywhere, all at once. <laughs> Great. I will see you guys next time. Be on the lookout for former critics pod. It should be coming out this week and on YouTube and everywhere you get podcasts. This is going to be called former critics, but the former critics YouTube is going to be on the Ferris things page. Be on the lookout for cult horror movie week. Big up. Big up. And are we uh, allowed to do that? I don't know. Chet Hanks, right? Chet Hanks. It's a Chet Hanks. The Chet Hanks thing. Yeah. Bobo Zo. Right, that's <laughs> too early. Why? We're done. Because we were just talking about Chet Hanks. Oh, you want to go into Chet Hanks? No more wearing salmon, guys. And what else did he say about calling girls something? No more calling girls. Oh, yeah, don't call them smoke shows. Smoke and yeah, shows. And we've heard that too many times in real life. Cut it out, guys. Cut it out. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the vibe. I didn't, because when he said that, I was like, do people actually say that? But they do. And it's cringe. Yeah, it's the kind of guys at the bars that are like scheming and scamming that are like I, standing at the bar like this. And they're like, what a fucking ew, uh, smoke show. And you're like, "Get yeah, sit the fuck down. And then they go home and it's weird, the flesh at their house. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Why didn't she want to sleep with me? I gave her my best line. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on that note. <laughs> Popo's out. We're back. We're back. Let's go. Ah, my brain exploded.